This is for you guys. Thank you very much for helping me get over 5,000 subscribers. 5,000! I was literally under a thousand before the end of September, and lo and behold, I'm literally 5,000 subscriber right now, which I'm definitely humbled by it. And I want to thank every single one of you, though I am aware of the fact that the majority of the people who are subscribed to me right now came from my top 10 Wars Shiny Pokemon, which Dookie Shed helped me to promote. So thank you very much, Dookie, and because of that, I want to give you guys my top 10 favorite Shiny Pokemon. Before I'm going to start this video, a few quick disclaimers. First of all, this is my opinion. And I know some people hate this self-entitlement that I have, but I only say this because my opinion is different than yours, and you probably have a different set of shinies that you like, so if you want to tell me which one you like, just write in the comments, but don't blame me for not sharing the same opinion. I think that's the beauty of the internet, that we can share each other's opinion in a much more broader context. And second of all, this list was a lot harder to make than the last one. Mostly because with the original list of the top 10 most shinies, I had a really hard time choosing shiny Pokemon that I didn't like, that I made some stupid decisions, and this is where I'm gonna apologize to Rapidash right now, because I actually think it's okay now, compared to some stuff I've seen in X and Y, but we'll get to that later. To do this list of the top 10 favorite shinies, it was hard to ask some that I really did like, so maybe one day I'll do a top 10 other favorite shinies, but we're talking right now about the best of the best. They want to have a really cool shade, they want to really have a really cool pizzazz to them, and of course, ones that I personally have an emotional connection to, a personal reason. So, without further ado, you guys asked for it, it's time for Blazer's Top 10 Shiny Pokemon! Sparkle! Number 10 for the number 10 slot, I have a Pokemon I'm pretty sure everyone is gonna agree. That's right, it's Lugia. And how can you say no to this thing? The call inversion works perfectly, which makes it primarily that which makes it really imposing. And I personally think that it's incredible. What? It's not a shiny, really? But they look at it, it's dark and flute different than the original. Ha! So you're telling me this thing is exclusive to Pokemon XD on the GameCube then? Okay, so how does the real shiny look like? That's it? Huh. Can you give me a real number 10, please? Number 10 When you associate ghost Pokemon to a color, you usually think of dark purple. When you associate fire Pokemon to a color, you usually think of red. And here comes Chandelure, which is a ghost fire Pokemon. Obviously, ghost is its primary type, which therefore makes it purple. But it does have those cool whispers flames, which I really like. So why not make its shiny form red? Oh wait, they did! Not only did I like the color because it's akin more to its secondary type, fire, but it just looks freaking badass, that's for sure. But that is not the only reason why I like the shiny Chandelure form. Have you ever played a video game where you face against a boss, and after you hit it a bunch of times it becomes red? You know, his rage form? This is what I imagine Chandelure's and shiny form becomes. You know, the purple one is when it's calm, but then after you hit it to a certain uh, HP point it becomes red and angry, so... That's what I always imagined with it, and because of me using my vivid imagination, I always thought it's really cool that it's red, besides its association with the fire type. So you see, Chandelure, good job, you barely made it into my top 10 shiny list. I guess you had a ghost of a chance. Oh well, I haven't done this in a long time. Number 9 I was really excited for the fairy types when they were announced a year ago, because I was expecting a big shake-up to the metagame. But that really didn't happen because the majority of the new fairy types that were introduced weren't all that great. And it's probably one of the reasons why I don't like Slurpuff. Slurpuff isn't the most appealing Pokemon considering it's a cupcake that evolves from a cotton candy. Not to mention its original color scheme isn't nearly all that special being solely pink like its fairy brethren. Well, except for the That is until you witness its shiny form. The change from pink to brown definitely makes it stand out, especially the red dot on its forehead resembling a cherry, which makes it pass off as a cupcake far more convincingly. Well, then again, you know what's better than a strawberry cupcake? One that's made out of... CHOCOLATE! CHOCOLATE! Number 8 Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. 
I have a pain in my chest. Not. I think I fell for Chestnut the moment I saw its shiny form, because having the original one have white as its major color of its body doesn't really appeal to me. Not to mention, the dark green on shiny Chestnut makes it look more fierce, making it resemble more of a grass type, which, well, it is. Also, it shares more calls with Chestnut, so that is definitely a plus. I hate to just leave this entry with it just looks cooler, but you know what? It does! And it's another good reason to why the color starters are awesome! Number 7 Greninja becomes black when it's shiny. He can be even more stealthy because it looks more like a ninja! Do I really need to say anything else? Number 6 It's time for a pop quiz! Do you know how to make a dragon look cooler? Make it black, of course! And yes, yeah, Sporting Hexer seems to be pretty obvious and it was really close, but... Come on, Charizard. Just making Charizard black automatically makes it cooler than what it already is. Being black color makes it look more fierce, imposing, and just downright cool, and I definitely wanted to have one. Though it took me 600 bloody eggs, and it was especially annoying when I hatched a shiny fan pee in about 30. <laughs> I thought it was all worth it when I finally hatched a Charmander and got this beautiful Charizard. So why is it that low on the list? The Mega Forms. While well, Shiny Mega Charizard Y looks cool, albeit I wish it remained black and not dark purple, X's clash of blue and red just seems off to me. Which is probably the reason why I don't like Shiny Noivern. Still, it's Charizard, I can't really knock it off for those reasons that much, because up until this generation, we didn't even have Mega Forms, so you were safe, Charizard. For now. Number 5 I usually don't like to put two options in the same entry, but this kind of demands it, and besides, I've done it before in my top 10 intros. Because in this specific entry, I want to talk about both Gallade and God of War. If you have followed this channel for a long time, you know my very first shiny in Pokemon Y was a Kirlia. And not only was male, but also had perfect IVs in both attack and special defense, so naturally, I made a Gallade. Even that simple change of its secondary color from green to blue makes it look incredibly slick, and it's been the subject of envy of many of my friends. But enough about Gallade, let's move on to Gardevoir now. Which looks pretty similar to Gallade, but I'm gonna talk specifically about the Mega Form. To me, the white dress of Mega God of War is very underwhelming because it's the same color of its body. But with the shiny form, the dress becomes black, but on top of that, the hands also change color to black as well, which makes it look like it has gloves, which I think is a really cool touch. And I mean, just look at Gardevoir, she's gorgeous! Look at that dress, it looks like she's either an opera singer or a pawn queen, pretty much. She just flaunts herself extremely well with the clash of both the black and the white. And I really like the fact that even mine looks incredibly awesome in my game. Ha! So male god of war! Number 4 In my personal opinion, a great shiny Pokemon not only has to look different than the original Pokemon, but something can look even better than the original Pokemon, which is exactly the reason why I love Weavile so much. And here's why! Okay guys, I'm gonna level with ya. When I was born, I was born as a boy. Therefore, I had the aesthetic sensibility of a boy. So out of all the colors, the one I didn't like is pink. That's why I never had a Barbie doll. So in theory, I should hate Shiny Weavile, but I don't. I believe it was the fateful day when I strolled through the friend safari and found a Shiny Sneasel. It told me it was male because when it evolved, the pink tone of its body became darker, so I thought it looked cool. And it was definitely an acid in battle thanks to Ice Shard. So it may be a bit more of a personal reason, but ever since then Weevil became not only my favorite shiny Pokemon, but one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Number 3 I think it goes without saying that Bishop is one of the most badass and coolest Pokemon of all time, and just making a slight change from red to blue makes it stand out even more. Not only that, but like how the axe on his head becomes much brighter yellow, giving the impression it's special among all the other ones out there. 
but like many Pokemon on the list, this one also has a story. When it comes to hatching a perfect shiny Pokemon, I want to make sure it's battle ready so I can be a part of the competitive circuit. So, I was trying to hatch a Ponyard Shiny, and after 150 eggs, I did it, and that's even before it got the Shiny Charm, but it was female with crappy stats. So, I ditched it, and then after another 150 eggs, I hatched another one, which was female with good stats, but I wanted a male one. So, after 300 eggs, I hatched a male Ponyard with good stats, but with freaking inner focus instead of defiant. So I had to go to the Battle Mason and get that stupid ability capsule to change its ability, but at least now it shows that I have a really good Pokemon. So yeah, I admit, it makes me incredibly obsessive compulsive, but that's the main reason why Bisharp is on this list, not only because it's one of my favorite Pokemon, it's clearly a reward for my determination to get the perfect Pokemon that I wanted, even though it's impossible to pet this thing. Ow! 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 Number 2! I know that putting a legendary Pokemon in top 10 shinily seems to be kind of a cop-out, but let me be honest guys, a lot of them don't really have that great of colors, and do I really need to say Snot Green again? I thought so. And that's the reason why I'm gonna put at this spot my favorite shiny legendary of all time, easily, freaking Rayquaza! Rayquaza? Rayquaza? Ray Rayquaza? Rayqua I'm gonna stick with Rayquaza. Originally, I wasn't too hot on Rayquaza because its ability was just to nullify the main abilities of both legendaries. Really similar to how Zygarde is in this generation, but not sucking. So when I gave this Pokemon a fair chance, it won over my heart. And for a really good reason. It's badass. But you know what's even more badass? Turning it black! Dear God, this is definitely one of the coolest shinies of all time. Especially with the gold rings on its body, it makes it look so awesome! And one of the main reasons why it's so freaking awesome that even Oda Nobunaga himself, the feudal lord of Japan, used to conquer the entire country and all of its territories. He defeated even Date Masamune, as shown in this game, Sengoku Bastara. It's so awesome, okay? I'm just kidding. But Oda Nobunaga was part of Pokemon Conquest, which in my opinion is probably the most underrated Pokemon game of all time. In fact, in Japan they had this event that handed out Nobunaga's shiny Rayquaza, which thankfully I managed to get my dirty little hands on. My point is that when Rayquaza isn't shiny, it's definitely an awesome Pokemon. But when it is, its level goes past the zenith of sheer badassery. Badassery? Is that even a word? Rayquaza is awesome. Number one. If you've seen other top 10 shiny Pokemon, you can notice there's one common denominator of one entry on everyone's list, and rightfully so. And me putting it at number one may be a bit predictable, but it's rightfully earned because this is the first Pokemon I ever tried really hard to find shiny. My number one spot is definitely Metagross. I can't deny the fact how awesome this Pokemon is ever since I used it in Pokemon Ruby. I love the way it looks and it definitely become one of my favorite Steel Pokemon, but the blue body doesn't make it look as much as a Steel type, to me at least. So the shiny form definitely changes that by making the body itself chrome, but the icing on the cake is definitely that golden X on its face. Awesome Incarnate. To me, this is by far the best color combination out of any shiny Pokemon. But aesthetics alone are not gonna cement this Pokemon on the top without a more personal reason. Until Pokemon Black 2, I only had one shiny Pokemon I have ever found in the wild, and that was a shiny sea dot in Pokemon Ruby that is now a shift tree. But ever since that day, I have not seen a shiny Pokemon in the wild. And of course there are shiny event Pokemon that were distributed, but it's not the same as finding a wild shiny Pokemon, or in the case of what I had to do, breed one. Enter the Masuda method. After I managed to find a foreign ditto in the GTS, I decided to breed it with my Metagross that I trained, and thus began the breeding process that seemed to last forever going back and forth in the same route, over and over again, and it took me quite a lot of eggs, and well, <laughs> you know what happened. Well, I was trying to do the me Masuda method in Pokemon Black 2, and finally, after 278 eggs, I got this wonderful thing. And that's really what cultivated my fascination with shiny Pokemon, 
not just for my own personal capturing and breeding, but also seeing other people's reaction when they fight those rare creatures. Oh, shiny shinks! Shiny shinks! Oh my god! Oh my god! Shiny shinks! Shiny shinks! Oh, oh my god! <laughs> To me, finding a shiny Pokemon is an event, it's something that you'll always remember no matter what. And despite me making the top 10 more shiny Pokemon video, which by the way, if you really want to watch and spend more hatred, be my guest and click there, I do want to say that every shiny is still special. Even the shiny Gyarados that apparently everyone has after playing Gold and Silver is still special because it was the very first shiny Pokemon most people saw. The best way I can compare finding a shiny Pokemon in general is the same way that Charlie Bucket found the golden ticket in Willy Wonka. And yes, I know the odds of finding a golden ticket are much lower, but it's still, that moment when you find that something special is absolutely priceless. Which is the reason why I cherish my shiny Metagross more than anything. Metagross is so awesome, I would go into a Pokeball and ask it to train me. The end. I really hope you enjoy my top 10 shiny Pokemon. I want to thank each and every one of you who have helped me surpass 5,000 subscribers and I hope we can double that number. But even so, I'm really humbled by this, so thank you very much. If you want to subscribe, click right over there. And if you want to check a couple more videos, they're right there on the side, especially my review of South Park Chef's Love Shack, which is definitely inferior to South Park and the Stick of Truth. I also have a Facebook, a Twitter, and a Twitch account, and I really want to hear if you guys want me to do some streams and stuff like that, or maybe a Q&A session. I really want to develop this channel past this point right now, and I really want to focus on it. So tell me what you want to see. I really hope you enjoy this, and if the video gets enough love, I'll make more Pokemon Top 10. Of course that was gonna happen, but I'm gonna make a review next time, so look forward to seeing that, guys. So until next time, take care, and let's give a less shiny blast!